Number four is talent, which is very, very crucial for us. What is a reality check? We have challenges in our talent management. We have, uh, of course, remuneration package is not attractive. Some, are, some of the things are really attitude issues. We have, you know, attitudes among our people. Competency issues, not up to the level. Sometimes mismatch in placement. He likes this area, but, you know, we place them somewhere else where he's not good at. Sometimes our, if our exit policy is very ineffective, you know. They can't remove people. Lack of leadership, maybe, in some areas. Our talent pools are quite shallow. We need to improve this lap slide effectiveness and so on and so forth. So these are lots of challenges. And what we're going to do, as I mentioned just now, for talent, particularly for academics, we're going to have new pointer system KPI where all efforts are going to be counted. Be from clinical science, social science, art, humanities. Again, this is going to be deliberated more during the town hall sessions later on with the DVCs. Yeah? And for upskilling and reskilling, for the academics, we are going to do more uh, micro credential courses, uh, you know, increasing the learning experience, uh, enhancing uh, our, our knowledge and also knowledge sharing. What is going to happen is that remember the classroom, we are going to open up the classroom. I am teaching, for example, machining process or advanced manufacturing. There are people in different departments or different faculties who wish to come and know what is the latest in advanced manufacturing. They can come to my class. I'm going to sh knowledge sharing with the person. They might not want to listen to all 14 weeks, maybe just 3-4 hours. We want to allow that to happen. We want to democratize knowledge. So I might want to learn to sing. Then I might possibly go to Dr. Nase's class. Then, you know, I'm saying learning how to play piano, for example. So I should be allowed to go and learn something. Someone in um, IT wants to learn about, you know, law, for example, environmental law. They can actually go to the faculty of law. So we are going to open up classroom. Classroom is not something which is owned by lecturers. Classrooms are owned by the university. Lecturers are mandated to teach. So I think we are going to have that sort of policy, open policy for academic, where you can actually obtain knowledge from whatever domain that is existing in the university. Likewise, our executive, yeah. our PMP, we need to plan their career pathways. For this year, we are going to design these micro-credential courses or they are going to take our subjects for this. We have 700 plus PMP. We identify at least 500 of them for this year. They're going to join your class. Okay? So, for example, we identify gaps in our offices. Right? He's dealing with project management, for example, but not being trained to deal with projects. So, we are going to send to the civil engineering class, maybe, taking a subject in project management. So he got the competency level increase. Imagine every semester, 500 people are going into the classroom. We are going to elevate the knowledge of our people a notch up. Yeah? And 25 staff per year, starting this year, we are going to place them. We are going to park them in some industries or government agencies, top-notch attachment, we call it so that they gain some experience in industry slash academic, uh, sorry, uh, uh, agencies and obtain back the experience and share with us. It might span from one to three months, depends on uh, the uh, discussion with the industry, the relevant industry. For our operation staff, uh, our support staff, again, we also would like to open up this system for all of them. Yeah? They can be a, an administrator in the faculty, say, for example. They can join classes. But we're going to open up later because we want it to be a precision one. Head department need to identify what is the gap of that person and then send them for training in the university by joining classes and, getting, uh, the, uh, the, and, and sitting for the exam as well. So that might be a basis for promotion as well. Okay, so we identify causes and gaps in the person or in the faculty and then 
uh, send them for training. Hopefully, to the end of the process, they can also get degree by stacking the subjects. For example, this is called degree stacking program. So they can actually get a degree, either undergraduate degree or a postgraduate degree. 